Hey there. If you've ever wondered why some women have trouble getting pregnant, or maybe you're dealing with it yourself, this video is for you. Today we're going to talk about real science-based reasons behind females' infertility. From hormonal issues like PCOS and theory problems to infectious lifestyle and even things you would never guess, like keeping a pet. We will cover it all. And don't worry, I won't just list problems, I will explain the causes, the signs you should look out for, how doctors diagnose each condition and, most importantly, what you can do to prevent or manage them. So if you're ready to understand your body better or just curious about how fertility works, hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's start with one of the most common and often misunderstood causes of infertility in women, PCOS. Now, if you've ever heard the term polycystic ovaries, you might think it's all about having zits, but it's actually much more than that. PCOS is a hormonal disorder that affects how the ovaries work. In simple terms, it can stop your body from releasing eggs regularly, which obviously make it harder to get pregnant. So what's going on inside your body? In PCOS, your hormones, especially insulin and androgens, the male hormones that women also have in small amounts, get out of balance. This hormonal imbalance can mess with ovulation, making it irregular or even completely absent in some cases. Instead of maturing and being released, the eggs stay inside the ovaries, forming small fluid-filled sac that we call follicles or, or cysts. Now, how do you know if you might have PCOS? The most common signs are irregular periods acne, unwanted facial or body hair, especially on the chin, upper lip, chest, weight gain, particularly around the belly. Not everyone has all of these, but if you notice a few, it's worth checking in with your doctor. Diagnosis usually start with a simple conversation, your symptoms, menstrual history, and maybe a blood test to check hormone levels. An ultrasound of your ovaries might also be done to see if those little follicles are hanging around. As for the cause, we don't have a single clear answer, genetics seem to play a role, and insulin resistance is a major trigger. That means your body isn't using insulin properly, which can raise your insulin levels and cause your ovaries to produce more androgens. Now the good news, PCOS is treatable. You can't completely cure it, but you can manage it really well. Lifestyle changes, like regular exercise, a balanced low sugar diet, and weight management. Some doctors might prescribe medications like metformin to improve insulin sensitivity or birth control pills to regulate hormones. And if you are trying to conceive, medications like Clomiphen or letrozole can help stimulate ovulation. What about the prevention? While you can't always prevent PCOS itself, you can prevent it from getting worse. Early diagnosis is key. Pay attention to your body if your cycle are irregular or you notice other symptoms we talked about. Don't bar them up. The sooner you take action, the easier it is to manage. Alright, let's talk about something that's often painful, often misunderstood and sadly often ignored, endometriosis. You see, in typical menstrual cycle, the lining inside your uterus, called the endometrium, builds up to prepare for a possible pregnancy. If there's no pregnancy, this lining breaks down and comes out as your period. But in endometriosis, this same type of tissue grows outside the uterus, on places like your ovaries, fallopian tubes, or even the bladder and intestines. And here's the tricky part. Every month, this tissue still acts like it's inside the uterus, is thickened, break down, and bleeds. But it has nowhere to go, so it builds up in the body, causing pain, inflammation, and even scar tissue. 
This can interfere with how your productive organs function and, and make it harder to get pregnant. Now, let's talk symptoms. Endometriosis doesn't feel the same for everyone, but some of the most common signs are severe period pain, not just cramping, but the kind that messes with your whole day, pain during sex, chronic lower back or pelvic pain, heavy or irregular periods, and in some cases digestive problems like bloating, diarrhea or constipation, especially around your period. So what causes it? Honestly, we're still figuring it out. One theory is something called retrograde menstruations, where period blood flows backward through the fallopian tubes into the pelvic cavity. Genetics, immune tissues, and even environmental factors might also play a role. As for diagnosis, it can be a long road. Many women go years without being diagnosed because the symptoms are often dismissed as normal period pain. Doctors may start with a pelvic exam, ultrasound or MRI, but the only way to be 100% sure is through a small surgery called laparoscopy, where they look inside the abdomen with a tiny camera. Now here's the good news. There are ways to manage it. Hormone therapy, pain medication can help with the symptoms and in more serious cases, surgery can, can be used to remove the abnormal tissue. When it comes to fertility, it really depends on the severity. Some women with male endometriosis get pregnant naturally. Others may need help, like IVF. But the earlier it's diagnosed, the better your chances. Can you prevent it? Not really, at least not yet. But what you can do is listen to your body. If you're constantly struggling with painful periods or pelvic pain, don't ignore it. Speak up, ask questions, push it for answer because no one knows your body better than you do. Okay, let's take a moment and talk about something often flies under the radar, your hormones. Now I know hormonal imbalance sounds super vague, like something people just say when they're not feeling great. But when it comes to fertility, your hormones are absolutely critical. They are like the conductors of a very delicate orchestra. And even one instrument plays out of the tone, your entire cycle can get thrown off. Let's start with thyroid. Your thyroid is this tiny butterfly-shaped gland in your neck, but don't let its sides fool you. It controls your metabolism, energy, mood, and yes, your reproductive system. If it's underreactive, your periods might become irregular or stop altogether. If it's overreactive, your cycle might shorten or your ovulation might get disrupted. And then there's prolactin, a hormone your body normally makes when you're breastfeeding. But in some women, even when they're not pregnant, their prolactin levels are too high. That can stop ovulation and confuse your menstrual cycle. So what you should look out for? Symptoms of hormonal imbalance might include constant fatigue or low energy, sudden weight gain or weight loss, mood swings or anxiety, irregular or missing periods, low sex drive, sometimes even hair thinning or dry skin. Honestly, these symptoms are easy to ignore or blame on stress, but if they're ongoing, it's worth checking. Diagnosis is simple. A basic blood test can check your thyroid hormone levels like TSH, T3 and T4 and your prolactin levels too, it's not invasive and the result can explain a lot. Treatments? Most hormone-related infertility issues are very treatable. For thyroid problems, medications like levothyroxine can get your hormones back on track. For high prolactin, doctors often use dopamine agnosis. In many cases, once your hormones are balanced, your cycle and your fertility comes right back. Now, what's about prevention? While you can't always prevent these issues, 
You can support your hormone by getting enough sleep, manage stress, eating balanced diet, avoiding extreme weight loss or gain, and most importantly, listening to your body when something feels off. So if you've been struggling with a regular cycle or you just feel like something isn't right, don't wait, a simple blood test could make a big difference. Let's be honest, infections aren't exactly a fun topic to talk about. But when it comes to fertility, it is super important because some infections can quietly damage your reproductive system. So let's start with something called pelvic inflammatory disease or PID for short. PID usually happens when untreated STI like chlamydia or gonorrhea travels upward from the vagina and infects the uterus, fallopian tubes or ovaries. It causes inflammation and scar tissue and the scar tissue can block the fallopian tubes, making it much harder for sperm and egg to meet. Here's the scary part. PID doesn't always show symptoms, but when it does, you might notice pain in the lower belly or pelvis, fever or chills, pain during sex, unusual vagina discharge, irregular bleeding between periods. And what about chlamydia and gonorrhea themselves? They go completely unnoticed, no pain, no burning, nothing. But they silently damage your reproductive organs over time. Diagnosis is simple, usually just a vaginal swab or urine test. And if cut early, antibiotics can treat it before it causes permanent damage. Now let's not forget some viral infections like HPV, human papillomavirus, which can lead to change in the cervix and some cases affect fertility. Cytomegalovirus, CMV, which can harm pregnancy. And in rare cases, even COVID-19 and hepatitis have been linked to hormonal disorders or cycle disruption. But wait, you might be wondering, can having a pet make me infertile? Well, not directly, but here is where it gets interesting. Some pets, especially cats, can carry a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. This is the one you often hear about in pregnancy warnings. It doesn't cause infertility directly, but if a woman gets infected during pregnancy, it can lead to complications or even miscarriage. So if you have cats, just be careful cleaning the litter box. Wear gloves or let someone else do it for you. So how can you protect yourself? Always use protection, especially with new partners. If something feels off, discharge, pain, don't wait it out. Go see your doctor. And during pregnancy, be careful with pet care, especially cats. Sometimes it's the quiet, invisible infections that do the most harm. So early detection is everything. So as you can see, infertility can be caused by many things. Some are physical, some hormonal, and others lifestyle related. The most important thing is, don't ignore the signs your body gives you. If your periods are irregular or you've been trying to conceive for over a year without success, talk to a doctor. The earlier you get diagnosed, the more options you will have, and many of these conditions are treatable. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and sharing it with someone who might need it. And if you have any questions or want me to go deeper into any topic, just drop it in the comments. I always read them. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself.